much has been written about the most successful pop group of all time, but far less has been printed about the man who charted their rise to global stardom, Brian Epstein. The new graphic novel, The Fifth Beatle, tells the story of a visionary manager who willed the Beatles' success into being, upended the music industry and all, while suffering from crippling anxiety. He was gay at a time when homosexuality was illegal in his home country, and Jewish during a period when anti-Semitism was widespread. Epstein did not live to see the Beatles' story end. He died from a drug overdose at the age of just 32. Still, the musicians and industry figures knew his pivotal role. As Paul McCartney told the BBC in 1997, if anyone was the fifth Beatle, it was Brian. Joining me now is Vivek Tarari, author of The Fifth Beatle. That's it. Thanks for being here. Thank you so much for having me. Tell us a little bit about how Brian Epstein created the Beatles as a band and as a brand. Yeah, so he discovered the band when they were a relatively unknown Liverpool group playing small clubs. And he saw in the Beatles a group that had a great message of love, as cheesy as that is to, to say, uh, to spread with the world. And he also saw in the group a band that, if presented properly, could appeal to everyone, could appeal to girls, boys, young people, old people, parents, that were truly cross-generational. Right. You say presented, I mean, and you've got a book here that presents a lot of beautiful yeah. imagery. Uh, some people love graphic novels. A lot of people don't know, you know, why someone would choose to tell a story this way. And yet Brian, as you, as you narrate, is someone who understood that the Beatles had to have a certain look. That's right. I mean, he came up with the suits, the haircuts. He really imaged the band and, and, and pr found a way to present them uh, so that the world could embrace them. That's really what they did. He knew that their message would be universal if presented in such a way that everybody could hear it. And that's really what Brian did for the band. And in terms of the graphic novel medium, it, it's, it's a way for us to tell not just the facts of the Brian Epstein story, but the poetry behind it. Because mm -hmm. apart from being a great Beatles story, at, at its heart, it's a very inspiring human story about this guy who, with, with all the obstacles he faced, realized a spectacular dream. He was really, un, un, in many ways, the ultimate outsider, being gay, Jewish, and from Liverpool, as you pointed out. Uh, so really, he overcame all these personal obstacles to, to realize this wonderful dream, and, and that's yeah, the heart speak, of the story. Speak about his, his identity, and on the one hand, people yeah. think back to that period as a time of exploration, free love, a cultural shift, yeah, uh, yeah. and yet it was very difficult for him. Yeah, it's amazing. I mean, you know, he died in 1967 during the Summer of Love, and, uh, you know, the truth was that was a summer of love if you had the right kind of love. Uh, but for somebody like Brian, to use another Beatles reference, he had to hide his own love away. So while I find the story is incredibly inspiring, it's also quite tragic. You know, here's a guy that exposed to the world a great message of love, as I said earlier. Right. And yet he dies at the age of 32, never having had a proper boyfriend. And, and his death's impact on the band? Uh, you know, it's, uh, there's a lot of what ifs, what might have happened if he had lived, but there's no question that right after Brian died is when the Beatles faced their first taste of, of failures and criticism. The Magical Mystery Tour was in large part a disaster. They started publicly bickering. You know, Brian viewed the Beatles as a family. In a lot of ways, I think they were the children that, as a gay man, he could never dream of having. And much like any father, you want to keep your family together. And while, the, while it's unknown whether Brian could have actually kept the band together, I'm fairly certain he wouldn't have allowed them to explode so publicly with so much acrimony suing each other. You know, the dissolution of the Beatles was, was, not, was not a pleasant thing to observe. And I don't think Brian would have allowed that to happen. And your personal background, being in theater, a Tony Award winning plays, uh, how much of that drew you in? Do you think of the Beatles as, as a group that was consonant with that kind of larger thematic music and storytelling? Yeah, I mean, I think the, the Beatles were, I mean, one of the things that Brian really brought to the band was theatricality. You know, he was a big fan of bullfighting, and if you read the book, you'll see that the matador image is something that runs through the entire book. And he brought that sense of theatric theatricality to the Beatles. Uh, as I mentioned, he came up with the early suits and the haircuts, and I think his love of bullfighting is not such a, such a stretch to see the Sgt. Pepper's costumes in there. Yeah. Um, so I think that's something he really brought, brought to the group. Yeah, you know, I, I like everyone grew up, you know, grew up listening to the Beatles, yeah. even though they were an older band. But I think back of my parents had the the vinyl album sure. covers. Sure, yeah, yeah. They're so visual. I was thinking about that. That's how I got into this. them. Yeah, yeah. It was through my parents. A, those, a, those album covers. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. All right. The book is the fifth Beatle. Perhaps a great gift this holiday season. Thank you, author Vivek Tiwari. Thank you very much.